So hello friends. So I'll talk on this uh, basic topic, renal tubular acidosis. So I'll just give a brief overview. So I wish to acknowledge my colleague Kiran who helped me develop this content. So it's a brief overview for uh, all the trainees. So uh, renal tubular acidosis, as you would have been reading it from MBBS time, so it can be a bit confusing. So it's just good for intensives also to have a bit of a clarity as to where the whole problem lies. So as the name suggests, renal tubule, so the whole problem lies with tubules. So glomerular function is normal. So you have three renal tubular acidosis, as you would know. So type one renal tubular acidosis, the whole problem is in the DCT, crystal convoluted tubule. So that is where the problem lies. And the key aspect of renal tubular acidosis is glomerular function will be normal. And there are usually defects in the either proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, or collecting tubules. So this is where the whole defect lies. And predominantly, the defect is with fluoride reabsorption. So there is a lot of fluoride reabsorption that happens. So there is hyperchloremia. That is the key aspect. So any intensivist who sees high chloride in someone with acidotic, so they should keep this in mind because it will be a normal anion gap acidosis with hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis because the chloride absorption happens in these collecting tubules and that fails to happen. Uh, I mean, that there is more of reabsorption of chloride. So as you see in type one renal tubular acidosis, there is a lot of chloride reabsorption that tends to happen from the DCT and the collecting tubule. And there is failure of hydrogen secretion in this collecting tubule. So which means hydrogen remains in the blood. So there is hydrogen ions that are contributing to the acidosis or acidemia that develops. And there is bicarbonate and potassium which gets excreted in the tubule. So because so that because bicarbonate is being excreted, so there's more acid content accumulating in the blood. And this uh, distal renal tubular acidosis is also associated with uh, the renal calcification or nephrocalcinosis or renal stones. And they can have citraturia also. So these are some of the key findings. So for, for uh, the audience to simply remember, the type 1 is distal. So the problem rise in the distal convoluted tubule. And in all the renal tubular acidosis, the main pathognomonic feature is chloride. There is increased chloride in the serum because of increased uh, reabsorption of chloride from the collecting tubules and the DCT. So what are the findings in distal renal tubular acidosis? As I said, because there was bicarbonate and potassium, which is excreted in the urine. So there will be hypokalemia and there is hyperchloremic acidosis. So there are only, uh, so the type one and type two, you would have hypokalemia. So you would see the type four would have hyperkalemia. So we'll talk about it. So this has hypokalemia and hyperchloremic acidosis. So bicarbonate can be less than 10 milliequivalents. As you saw, the bicarbonate gets excreted in the urine and there is reduced ammonium excretion in the urine. And this is a condition where uh, kidneys are unable to acidify urine because you have a lot of bicarbonate which is getting excreted and you have, uh, uh, so you, you, you have a lot of hydrogen getting accumulated in the blood. So urine is alkalotic. So they are not able to acidify the urine. So you have pH, which is more than 5.5, which is also a classic feature of type 1 acidosis, renal tubular acidosis. So, and uh, when you look at the microscopic level, there is a defective function of this hydrogen ATPase uh, sort of a exchanger and the hydrogen potassium ATPase system. So, these uh, channels are present within the uh, collecting tubules and these uh, channels are defective and there is chloride reabsorption that tends to happen from these uh, cells with, into the blood. And in amphotericin B toxicity is one of the cause of type 1 renal tubular acidosis. In amphotericin B toxicity, there, there is inability or imbalance of pH. There is a inability to maintain the pH balance between the collecting tubules and the cells, between the tubular lumen and the cells. So this is the sort of a reason for uh, type 1 acidosis in amphotericin B toxicity. What are the causes of type 1 renal tubular acidosis? So mainly autoimmune condition like Jogren's, SLE, rheumatoid, all, all these autoimmune conditions can cause type 1. And autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis also can cause type 1 renal tubular acidosis. And there are hypercalciuric conditions like hyperparathyroidism, vitamin D toxicity, and sarcoidosis. So these are some of the causes which you may have to remember. So, so these are some of the conditions which typically cause type 1 renal tubular acidosis. And in all renal tubular acidosis, there are certain drugs which causes. So amphotericin B 
has a unique sort of a characteristic of uh, acting at the tubular level in its ability to not able to maintain the pH balance between the tubular lumen and the cells. So that's how amphotericin B toxicity causes uh, renal tubular acidosis. And there are other drugs like uh, ibuprofen, lithium, and ephospromide. So, so for all renal tubular, there are certain drugs which causes renal tubular acidosis. So these are the drugs which cause distal renal tubular acidosis. So that was about uh, the uh, type 1 renal tubular acidosis, which is uh, mainly the distal RTA. So the problem is at the distal tubules. So in all the renal tubular, the one common thing is chloride reabsorption is happening. And distal renal tubular, you saw bicarbonate keeps getting excreted in the urine. So they're unable to acidify the urine. That's why pH is more than 5.5. And that is very important in our diagnostic delineation between the types. And then we looked into certain causes and the hydrogen secretion is not happening. So there's more hydrogen ions in the blood. So that was about type 1. So what is happening in type 2 renal aperture? So type 1 is distal. Type 2 is proximal renal tubular acidosis. So the whole problem lies in the proximal convoluted tubule. So this is the PCT. So here, uh, so there is reasonable bicarbonate absorption. So that's why in this particular condition, urine pH will be less than 5.5. So this is the key delineating feature between the type 1 and type 2 because here bicarbonate is being absorbed. So 60% bicarb get absorbed in the PCT and there is 15% of bicarb that gets absorbed from the DCT, distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting tubules. Because bicarbonate is absorbed into the blood, so here there may not be too much of acidosis because bicarbonate is present in the blood. There is, But there is some bicarbonate because 60, 75, 25% of bicarb does get excreted. So here urine pH can be less than 5.5. So that is a key delineating feature. Like all RTS, chloride gets reabsorbed. So there is more chloride in the serum. And potassium secretion happens into the tubules, which means, so there, there is uh, less potassium. So again, this condition will have hypokalemia. Even you saw in type 1 RTA, potassium was excreted. Here also potassium secretion happens into the tubules, which means there is less potassium in the serum. So there will be hypokalemia. And 25%, the rest of the bicarbonate gets excreted. So, so there is bicarbonate urea, but not as much as in uh, type 1 renal tubular acidosis. That's why pH here will be less than 5.5. That is the key differentiating factor between type 1 and type 2. So, and because the proximal convoluted tubule is getting affected, these are some of the ions which gets absorbed in the PCP. So, there will be uh, amino acid urea, because there is defects here, there will be amino acid urea, glycoseria, and phosphaturia, which happens in this uh, type 2 renal tubular acidosis. And as I said, pH will be less than, because here they're able to acidify urine, because there is less bicarbonate excretion. Because in type 1, you saw more bicarbonate excretion, here it is less. So this is the key differentiator between type 1 and type 4. Type 4 also, urine pH will be more than 5.5. They are unable to acidify urine because there's more bicarbonate loss in the urine. So that's what you need to remember. So what are the causes of type 2 renal tubular acidosis? Mainly the drugs, acetazolamide, tenofovir, and ephosphamide are the drugs that can cause type 2. And amikacin can cause type 2 renal tubular acidosis. Then there are M-protein disorder, like amyloidosis and paraproteinemia or plasma cell cytomas. So these are some of the paraproteinemic conditions which can cause uh, type 2 renal tubular acidosis. There are heavy metals like copper, cadmium, mercury, lead, which can cause type 2. And vitamin D deficiency, Jogren's. I think Jogren's you saw even in uh, type 1 RTA. Here also you would see uh, it can cause uh, type 2 also. And uh, PNH, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin. So these are some of the conditions causing type 2 RTA. So that's about type 2. So we'll move to type 4. Type 4 is easy. So the type 4 RTA is mainly hypoaldosteronism. So there is reduced aldosteronism. That is the main uh, pathognom patho pathophysiology behind type 4 renal tubular acidosis. So aldosterone acts. In, what does aldosterone do? It tends to conserve sodium in the serum. Because aldosterone is deficient, aldosterone acts on the collecting tubules to reabsorb sodium. Because so, so here the reabsorption of sodium is not happening. So, which means, so, so sodium content in the blood comes down. So, more sodium loss is happening in the tubules. Because sodium is, uh, there is inability to retain sodium. So, what happens to potassium? Because sodium is getting excreted. So, there will be more potassium. So, this is the only condition where hyperkalemia happens. Because type 1 and type 2, you have hypokalemia. Because potassium is getting secreted into the collecting tubules. But here, because sodium remains within the tubule, there will be more potassium. Because sodium remains in the tubule, it will draw water also from the serum. So there will be more water loss. 
and like all rts the common feature is chloride keeps getting reabsorbed because there is more chloride because the typical feature is normal anion gap hyperchloremic acidosis is the hallmark of renal tubular so chloride gets reabsorbed in this and potassium because sodium is getting excreted sodium remains in the tubule potassium tends to remain in the serum there is hyperkalemia that happens and hydrogen does not get secreted in the collecting so there is more hydrogen which leads to acidosis and like other condition uh, so there is water loss because because sodium remains in the tubule it will draw water so there is sodium and water loss so this is the typical uh, sort of a pathophysiological changes that happen in type 4 rta and what are the findings as because sodium is getting excreted remains in the tubule there is more potassium there is hyperkalemia and there is hyperchloremic acidosis and again here ph will be more than 5.5 so and the causes of type 4 renal tubular acidosis is aldosteronism so hypoaldosteronism can be due to genetic congenital hypoaldosteronism or gordon syndrome then there are renal causes like diabetic nephropathy or glomerulonephritis or obstructive uropathy so these are some of the causes of type 4 rta and for like any other rta there are these drugs ac inhibitors which are commonly used can cause type 4 rta and arbs angiotensin receptor blocker or calcineurin inhibitors like cyclosporin used in transplant and nsaids so these are some of the drugs that can cause type 4 rta and there is there are certain drugs which cause aldosterone resistance so trimethoprim is one of them and all the potassium sparing diuretics like the spironolactone or uh, espelerone so all these can cause aldosterone resistance and there are certain other genetic aspe uh, aspects where there can be inhibition of this uh, sodium channels uh, within the cell or there can be voltage gated channel deficiency sodium channel deficiencies all this can cause type 4 rta so that's in brief about type 1 was distal type 2 is proximal rta uh, where in proximal rta is one of the characteristic is uh, that urine is able to acidify urine because there is less bicarbonate excretion but type 1 and type 4 you have a ph which is uh, uh, you know more than 5.5 and uh, we we'll look into the diagnostics so the type 4 is easy it's hyperaldosteronism because sodium is unable to retain potassium is more there is hyperkalemia in other type 1 and type 2 it will be hypo hypokalemic hyperchloremic acidosis so let us look into how to go about in clinical scenario the algorithm that we can follow so the first thing for everyone to see is whether there is hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis and a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis once that is there then you need to do urine anion gap so this i'm sure many of you would have listened if urine anion gap is negative any gut which means there is loss of acids in the gut which means there is diarrhea or there can be large volume resuscitation so that is the cause for if urine anion gap but mainly the gut losses are what will cause urine anion gap it to be negative if urine anion gap is positive then it is a renal cause for normal anion gap metabolic acidosis that is when you have to think about this uh, type 1 type 2 or type 4 renal tubular acidosis then you if it is positive then you need to do these three things you need to do urine ph that's why I, the whole narrative i was emphasizing on urine ph because urine ph delineates between type 1 and type 2 so you have to do urine ph serum potassium to delineate between type 4 and type 1 and type 2 and bicarbonate loading so if it's very simple if urine ph is less than 5.3 and serum potassium is low or normal so as i said it is unable to uh, you know acidify so urine ph is less than 5.3 it will be proximal renal tubular acidosis so in the second one urine ph is more than 5.3 so uh, serum potassium is low or normal so this will be your distal renal tubular acidosis which is type 1 renal tubular acidosis so the third one is urine ph is less than 5.3 so if it is less than 5.3 it has to be type 4 or It, is, it has to be type 2 if it is type 1 it will be more than 5.3 so this will be type 4 renal tubular acidosis so this is a very simple sort of an algorithm which you can sort of remember so the first step is to look at whether it's negative negative means it is a gut loss positive means it is a uh, renal positive possible renal tubular acidosis then you have to do these three things urine ph potassium and bicarbonate and urine ph is what delineates between type 1 type 2 and type 4 renal tubular acidosis and if it is hyperkalemia it is very simple it is type 4 rta so to differentiate between type 1 and uh, type 2 you need urine ph so your proximal renal tubular acidosis which is type 2 as you saw there is uh, 
sort of a, a urine pH, that, that there is ability to acidify urine because bicarbonate loss is happening. So here it is, urine pH will be more than 5.3 in type 1 acidosis. So with regards to treatment, it's very simple. There's no rocket science in treatment. It is only two simple things. You have to give bicarbonate. So if it is distal RTA, you, have, you just have to give alkali therapy, which is bicarbonate. If it is proximal renal tubular acidosis, because there is a lot of potassium loss and phosphate, you may have to give bicarbonate along with potassium and phosphate. So that's about it. About uh, It's a brief overview of renal tubular acidosis. So, so very simple. So just remember those pictures. So type 4 is the easiest uh, for anyone to recall. It is hyperchloremia. And it is due to hypoaldosteronism because there is inability to maintain sodium. So you have a high potassium as a uh, thing. And in all this, there will be chloride. So there will be hyperchloremic normal anion gap acidosis. And the key differentiator between type 1 and type 2 is the urine pH. Okay. So if you remember that, I think that should uh, gain clarity. And the causes, autoimmune causes, remain common for type 1 and type 2. And uh, as you saw, the type 2, type 1 renal acidosis, mainly you had uh, certain drugs which were causing. And uh, type 1, you had uh, uh, micacin, which was causing. So I think in type, uh, type, sorry, type 1, it was amphotericin B. Uh, type 2, it was amicacin. So, so those are some of the drugs you can remember, which are the common drugs that we tend to use in ICU. So you can rehear to this if you have any confusion. So, so thank you, one and all. Uh, with this quote, you want to be powerful, educate yourself.